Um, intro. Uh, thank you. Monica's recording this for uh, people who need it. Um, so I am Dr. Mills. I started Shine. This is our seventh summer. I uh, really love Shine. It's such a great, it just, just works out great every summer. And even when it's remote, it works out great. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know you. I'm going to give you an overview uh, in a minute. Well, not in a yeah, in a minute. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about it now. A little bit about me. I've had about five careers. And uh, I say that so that you can know that it's, uh, you don't have to worry about the rest of your life right now, because you just never know how things are going to change and things end up making sense. So I started uh, as a nutrition science major in, uh, I went to UC Berkeley. So I was a STEM major. I grew up in an art family. My father was an art museum director. So I rebelled. And instead of going into art, I went into science. Um, I worked as a nutritionist in a vitamin supplement company for a while. And then I transferred into marketing. So I worked in marketing at a Fortune 500 company. So I know a lot about business. Uh, then I got went into business for myself and I did more marketing stuff for a lot of different clients. Then I got bored. It was, I was 30 and I got bored and was like, is this what, is, is this, is this it? I ended up going back to school. I got a PhD in film, believe it or not. So I kind of went back towards my art roots. I taught uh, writing and film for many years, including at USC. I got my PhD at USC taught at USC, Occidental College. And then I decided to go back into business. And I worked in a startup film streaming company way before Netflix. Uh, that got sold and I uh, was out of work and I realized most of my work experience was in higher education. So I came to USC to the Viterbi School of Engineering and I've been here ever since. Um, I always, when I was a Professor, I always taught about community learning and I love experiential learning, which Shine is you learn through experience and not necessarily studying. Um, so that's a little bit about me and you'll get to know me a lot more. I'm going to throw it over to Monica. Now, it takes a whole team of people to make Shine happen, especially as big as it is this year. I couldn't do this without Monica Lopez. Uh, so, Monica, would you give us a little introduction? to you, please. I guess, of course. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Hope you're all doing well. I know it's a Monday. Um, I am, I was born and raised here in LA, lived here my whole life. Um, and I was really nervous about leaving LA with going to college. And I didn't go too far. I went to UC Irvine. So if any of you want to know a little bit of UCI, zot, zot, you can talk to me. I can let you know about it. Um, right there, I double majored in education. Um, and psychology. Um, they're a really good pairing. So if you also want to talk about double majoring and different career paths, you can let me know. Um, after UCI being there, I really learned that I really care about the community where I come from. So I came back to um, Los Angeles and I wanted to give back, especially with college access. I worked with different programs uh, with helping students with college applications, with helping students in career trajectories. Um, and then I ended up getting my master's at USC. And then I was kind of like a dream come true because growing up next to USC, I always wanted to go there. So it's like really nice um, to go full circle and go back and um, now work here at the K-12 Viterbi STEM Center. Um, they're wonderful people, I'm very supportive. So if you ever need help, you can reach out to me or Katie or even your um, center mentors. Everyone just wants to support you and see you success through this program. Um, I've been here for um, more than six months, so I'm new, but I'm very eager to help you all. Um, a little bit more about me is that I also did research in my undergrad, so if you need help with, you know, contacting different labs or getting that experience in undergrad, I'm also available to share my knowledge with that, um, and that is a little bit about me. Thanks so much, Monica, and um, uh, Ashley's in the house. We're going to introduce her a little bit later, so uh, I'm, we're going to have the first of the slides so that you can meet each other, at least uh, looking at the, the screen. And we're going to give you more opportunities to meet each other in person. Um, I'm going to ask Monica to monitor chat for me, um, please, because um, when I show my screen, I can't see the chat. And
Hang on. I think we're coming. Okay. Hmm, my slides are so big. Okay, you guys there? We good? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you, Monica. Um, okay, you, before I get started, I wanna um, just say that we do have a few ground rules um, that are pretty common knowledge at this point. Like, you know, be nice, don't bully each other, don't sexually harass each other, don't take pictures of each other and post them on social media, uh, certainly without permission. We encourage social media, but you guys got to remember that we've, there's a lot of us and you just got to really respect uh, privacy. You've all signed something and so have your parents, what we call the code of conduct. Um, and we, we've never had any problem with this in Shine and I don't expect to have any problems. Just wanna make it clear from the beginning. Um, it's gonna be, it's hard to get to know one another remotely and through Zoom. So just be cool, that's it. Okay, we all good? I hope so, all right. Um, okay, there's 58 of you and there's 50 Shine mentors and there's 30 professors. So this is the biggest Shine we've ever had. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why. Um, let's see. There we go. Um, it's our largest cohort ever. And on this slide, I'm giving you a view of how Shine has grown over the years since it began. We started out um, with just 11, uh, with 18 faculty. That's the yellow there, 19 Shine students and just 11 Shine mentors. Now go all the way up to 2021. Um, as I said, there's 58 of you. And last year was our first time being remote because of COVID. We were much smaller, you can see. We've had got a 67% increase this year. Um, and we have more faculty than ever before. So this is good. This means that more faculty want to be working with high school students because Shine has really a great reputation. You guys do a great job and it makes the faculty, the professors want to work with you. I'm gonna talk this morning about the hierarchy in a university, in a research university, about why the faculty are so important. Um, and so just wanted you to see, it's, it's gonna be quite big and we've got a lot of help to make sure that you have a great experience. Okay. There we go. Uh, why is it so big? Because we accepted a lot more people from, from the Bay Area, a couple people from San Diego, uh, and which we would not normally have done, okay? Uh, we really like to um, keep our focus on Southern California students because obviously we're located in Southern California. Um, we really want to help students you know, in our area. But because we were remote, we thought we're just going to take advantage of it. Uh, it's always great to have uh, students from different areas so that it's part of the diversity that we offer, geographic, uh, age diversity, all these different kinds of schools and stuff. I'm going to talk about that. Um, so this is going to be the last year that we're going to have so many people from out of town. Because when we go back to being in person next year, um, it's just too, it's too hard to deal with housing for everybody. Um, as I said, we have more professors than ever, which is awesome for us. And we're also really popular with the Shine Mentors. The Shine Mentors are the PhD students, the postdocs, and we even have a couple of professors who are you're going to be your Shine Mentors. So I'm going to explain all of that to you. Okay, um, more than half of you are women. Woohoo! Uh, we do aim for equity equity and gender. We, we overshot a little bit this year. This is something we do on purpose because we know that uh, a lot of STEM is not always welcoming to women. So glad to have you here, both of you, both men and women. Um, okay, Monica, I think you, did you have a chance to fix these slides? Um, I didn't get a chance to fix that slide, but I did fix the school slide. Okay, so um, uh, we do, as I said, we've got, I think, 17 people from, um, 15 people from the Bay Area, two people from San Diego, most of you from Los Angeles. We got, we got a good representation from Irvine and, um, and 
that area. So this gives you a sense, and I do want you to start getting to know wh who's who's near you, because even though we're remote, there is possibility of getting together informally and all of you in the Bay Area might want to get together, even though you are spread out from San Ramon to Ramon to Cupertino. Um, oh, goodness. <laughs> That's yeah, kind of hard to read. read. <laughs> uh, but I guess you can see this name is the names of the schools that uh, where we have a lot. So uh, you could see Diamond Bar. We got four of you in the house. Portola, we got four of you here. Uh, uh, we got two of you from Harvard, Westlake, two from Whitney, uh, three from Windward, uh, two from Harker, two from Doherty. So uh, if you don't know each other and you're from the same school, good time to get to know each other. But most of all, an opportunity to meet as many of the 57 other people as possible. Uh, this We really aim for you guys to get to know each other and be if friendly, if not friends. Okay, every year the average GPA is 3.9. You guys are super smart. And what we really worry about is not that you are smart enough to be in Shine. We worry about you being too anxious and too hyper performing. So we try to have fun. Okay, we try to be as casual as we can be. We know it's kind of like learning in Shine is a little bit like going to a foreign country and getting immersed in the language. That's what, to me, experiential learning is. You're gonna learn better when you're just immersed and you don't have to worry about conjugating your verbs in advance because when you're in that country, having to use that foreign language, you learn it. Um, about uh, three quarters of you are from public schools and we do have about 20, 26% from private schools. Um, we also think that that's a great way of diversifying the Shine um, cohort because some of you get uh, a lot more attention in private schools than in public schools, and we just mix it up so you can just sort of see what the uh, what the differences are. You know, my slides aren't advancing the way I want them to. Technical breakdown here. There we go. Okay. Uh, most of you are juniors, about three quarters of you are juniors, but we've got currently. So you're going to be rising seniors. You're going to be looking for colleges and stuff in the coming year. We're going to be able to help you with that. Uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, rising uh, juniors and rising sophomores, uh, you're going to get some exposure to thinking about colleges and it's never too soon to start thinking about it, but it's always too soon to start worrying about it. Okay, it's counter what everything everybody else is telling you in the world. We're going to try to just relax about that here because you guys always do well in your college choices. Okay, the way we handle such a big crowd is we are dividing you into subgroups. And the way we go is on, uh, uh, Monica, did you start re, re recording or did you record the whole time we were doing the slides, the survey? Oh, I started after the survey. Okay, good. Thank you. So, um, subgroups. If you look at the uh, left side of the screen for computational, so many fields are computational, not just the traditional ones that you might think of, computer science, robotics, um, but even environmental engineering, biomedical engineering does a lot of simulations and modeling. Um, and we're, you're gonna learn about that, but uh, there is still a continuum. On, and uh, on the far right are the fields where you kind of expect the kind you might have in high school where you are in a code and goggles and uh, dealing with flames and beakers and Bunsen burners and stuff like that. So um, this is the way we break it down. Uh, on the far left, obviously robotics, computer science, on the far right, biomed, environmental, and in between is a sort of continuum. Um, we do this really more for convenience, uh, but this is a way that you will get to know the people within your subgroup quite well. But through our um, all cohort activities, we want you to get to know everybody. Uh, it's also very common to come in to shine uh, knowing that you really love, that you really uh, love aerospace. And then it ends up that you find out, well, actually, 
I kind of like the way uh, industrial and systems engineering is using modeling to do some of the things that I didn't quite realize were, were available to me when I just knew about aerospace. So we mix it up a lot, but you will get to break out into your subgroups today. Um, here's how it breaks out. So most of you are in robotics and computer science. So a, about a third of you, almost the same amount are in electrical engineering and material science. Awesome. 24% um, of you are in biomed, chemical engineering or environmental. Um, and then the least of you are in civil, aerospace, ISE, we call it industrial and systems engineering or mechanical. Um, yeah, you know what, the breakout is different every year. And a lot of it depends on how many professors in each of those fields says, yes, I want SHINE students this summer. Now there's a lot of factors that go into which professors say they want SHINE students. Uh, a lot of it has to do with their PhD students or postdocs who are available because uh, your main contact is always gonna be your SHINE mentor. Uh, and, um, the, and I'll explain why. All right. Okay, let's get introducing one another. All right, so you guys, you sent us your pictures. We are going to introduce you. So first off, we're gonna welcome the biomed, chem and environmental subgroup. Okay, so it's in uh, alphabetical order by professor. So, and if, you know what, if I'm mispronouncing your names, just bear with me, um, Jameen. Everybody say hi. You're, you're gonna be in Professor Chung's biomed group. Glad to have you here from La Cunada. Um, in Professor Zevaletta's group, biomed still. Emily from nearby Ortho Medical Magnet High School. Gabby from Marymount and Amy from Santee. Glad to have you guys here. And uh, it, you know, it's up to the professors how many people she or he lets in. Um, Professor Chung just wanted one, Professor Zavaleta wanted three of you. So uh, you will obviously get to know any lab mates pretty well. Let's move on to chemical engineering. Ethan and Carissa, happy to have you here. Uh, Professor Lee's group, Ashley and Yolanda. I'm not gonna say every school, but you know, you you can tell if you're local. And by we consider uh, Portola local, Temecula Valley, we consider you local, even though it would be hard to commute here every day. Okay, Professor Roberts, Joshua and Manasa, glad to have you here. Uh, Professor Sharada, Justine in the house. Environmental engineering. Professor Smith wanted three of you. Roberto, glad to have met you a few times. Miriam, I've met you a few times. And Kiara, I've met you guys because you've come to uh, info sessions and meet and greet. Good to have you. All right, that is our first uh, subgroup. We're going to move on to robotics, computer science. Okay, Professor Ayanian, Vrinda. Now, Vrinda has a star by her name because she's back for the second year in a row. We love it when we get repeat visits. So Vrinda, you're an amazing person. We're gonna hear from you, but not today. And Ashna, welcome. So you see you're both from, um, from out of the Bay Area, not super close, but um, you could get together if, uh, if safety allows. Okay, Professor Colbertson, Samarth and Smriti, glad to have you here. Uh, haptics in robotics, very cool subject. Professor Materic, okay, there's four of you. Now, she always has a lot of students because she's my boss. So those of you who are in Professor Materic's lab, you're gonna know who my boss is. Anishka, Luke, Alan, and Alondra. Super glad to have you here. You, uh, Harker School, I think that's not local, right? Otherwise you guys are local. Let's move on. So Professor Nguyen is, strictly speaking, he's in mechanics, but we're putting, we call him robotics. He makes uh, robots that jump, totally cool. Check out his website, everybody. Sophia, happy to have you here from Los Altos. Okay, Professor Nicolaitis it does uh, robotic hands, really cool. Dion and Nidia, super glad to have you here. 
Uh, Professor Govindrov. So we're moving on to Comp Sci. Uh, Tanvi D. All right. We got two Tanvis. Tanvi from Fremont. Uh, and now we're moving on to Professor Renz, computer science. He does great work with machine learning and hate speech. Wyatt, Erica, and Sanjit. You guys get to know each other. Two from out of town, one from uh, in town. Okay, Professor Zhang. Chris, good to have you. One of the four from Diamond Bar. Welcome here. All right, electrical and material science. I think I started with material science. Now, material science could be a lot of things, but the way Professor Ravachandran does material science, it's, it's all helping new materials that will help with um, uh, energy production and conduction and climate change. So we put you with the, the electrical people. Uh, Christian. Timothy and Brian, super glad to have you here. Okay, electrical engineering. And Professor Bogdan does all sorts of things from machine learning to more classical electrical engineering. That's what I'm saying. It's these different fields of engineering are mixing up these days. Ad Advaita, glad to, glad to have you. Avi and Vedika. Vedika. I got it. Vedika. I think I got it. Um, okay, and uh, and Professor Chen, we've got Aiden, um, and glad to have you here, Professor Shu Henry. We can see the Diamond Bar kids are pretty good with electrical, right? Professor Kapadia, actually that's misspelled. He he spells his name K A P. I'm pretty sure. Kapadia. Hey, Josh and Jean, glad to have you with Professor Kapadia. He's, he's been in shine the whole time. Professor Monge, uh, Luis and Irving. Uh, Professor Monge uh, is really cool. Does uh, new, elect new medical devices that you don't, that are invasive, um, where they can feel things through really cool techniques. And uh, Professor Nuzo, Nick, Mooking and Shirley. And that's misspelled too, electrical. Well, I gotta check these slides better. All right, glad to have you here. Professor Sedaris, Arnov, and Archie. Uh, awesome to have you here. All right, now this group, there's not a, you guys are the small group, but you are mighty. We are glad to have you here, okay? Uh, Professor Luhar, Maddie. Now, why does Maddie have a star? You guys already know, you got a hint from Vrinda. Do you know why well, she has a star? Maddie's back. She was here last year. Super glad to have her back. And we'll get, we'll get Vrinda and Maddie to share their experience, why they're back. Um, and she's uh, gonna be in Professor Luhar's lab with Vale and Philbert. All right, you guys are fantastic. Now we've got two professors in industrial and systems engineering, ISE. Professor Wu and Professor Swin. So Ashley, one of our Ashleys and Joy, glad to have you here. Uh, Professor Oberai, one of our two mechanical. Rachel, you're gonna have a great time with Professor Oberai. And Professor Zhao, got two of you, Amado and Amanda. So uh, glad to have you in mechanical. Civil engineering, last but not leech, least, Christine. Um, you're going to be doing some really cool stuff with virtual reality in civil engineering. All right. Glad to have everybody here. Now, I want to take a break and get you having opportunities to interact. Um, so it's a break, but you might be uh, taking advantage of this time to interact. Now, if you're not on Slack, and I believe that uh, Monica already slacked us out today, um, this now, Monica, if this is one of the uh, URLs that I was hoping you could also put in the chat. So we've created a Slack channel. We've created a Discord channel. And uh, we've also got this Jamboard that we started on the meet and greet. Now, I know that not all of you came to the meet and greet, um, but um, if you, even if you did, I want you to go back there and uh, if you've never used Jamboard before, it's super easy. You could figure it out on your own. Uh, what we have on Jamboard are ways that you might have commonalities with others. 
it, we started with video games, we had music, what do you like to make, uh, sports. And I think Monica added different subgroups. So it's a way you can say hi to each other on Jamboard, Discord, or Slack. So let's see, it's 9.50. Let's come back at 10. Okay, everybody, hope you got a chance. I know you're slacking. How many people, did anybody go to Jamboard? Raise your hand so I could take a look. Thank you, Arky. Oh, good, Justine, good for you. I'm still looking. You guys, it takes me a while to see everybody. If you, it, Emily, did you do it? Did you go to Jamboard? I'm looking at you, Emily. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, Joshua, I'm looking at you. Did you go to Jamboard? All right. Yeah. No. I'm doing now. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Good. So uh, those jam boards are going to be available uh, as a way to try to get to know each other some more. Okay. Everybody get a little blood back into their rear ends. Okay. Hope so. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again and talk at you more. Um, so listen, everything that I'm going to uh, say is going to be on our family's page. So we don't open, we don't advertise this page. So if you were, if you were just like Googling it or something, I, I don't know that you'd find it. But this is where we have everything. We have the calendar. And I'm going to talk about the calendar. So don't worry. Uh, readings. Um, uh, who are your center mentors? All of this stuff that I'm going to explain, but um, it's all here for you. So no need to worry if you um, you didn't catch everything. All right. So um, I, I do want to start just by explaining why we do Shine. Um, I am the co-director of the Viterbi School of Engineering uh, K-12 STEM Center. And you can see here that our mission is to uh, work in the community and uh, deal with some of the inequities that are out there between schools that have great STEM resources and not such great STEM resources. Uh, we really uh, aim to create culturally responsive. So that means, you know, STEM experiences that you can relate to from your, your gender, your ethnicity, your age, just the type of school you're in. Um, it's really important in STEM to increase the diversity, to um, make more equitable the opportunities and to be more inclusive. So we will talk about that a lot, but I just want you to know that everyone is here because we selected you. We didn't just select you, your professor selected you, your shine mentor selected you, you are here because we want you here, all right? We work actively to overcome systemic inequities, okay? Those are the things that keep STEM away from certain groups of people, and we're gonna talk a lot about that. Yeah, but what I wanna focus on is the end and the way that we are committed to the qualities that I imagine you are gonna develop in Shine that you already have, you wouldn't have gotten in Shine if you, weren't, if you didn't um, understand the relevance of STEM, if you didn't already have a certain amount of self-efficacy or belief that you could do these things, a certain amount of leadership, and that you're willing to learn in a community of learning and practice. So this is, this is our whole goal. This is like my, I spend every day enabling these things within schools, districts, teachers, students, and families. Okay, now this is what SHINE is about, right? It's research that is dealing with really complicated problems and the type of work you're gonna be doing in your research group is not gonna be available to the public for a couple of years. It's the cutting edge of what's gonna be the, the quantum computing of uh, the next generation of solar cells, um, of gene editing, of um, cancer interventions, okay? So this is what SHINE is all about. And that's what we mean by 
culturally culturally relevant and authentic. Um, this is what's cool about Shine is that you know when you're in high school and you're studying maybe physics and you don't understand why you're studying this stuff, you get to see it in action here. Okay, but how how do we find solutions through research? How is Shine going to do this for you? Um, and and how is this so different from what you're already used to? Okay, so in Shine. We've got two ways of doing this. This is what you're gonna be doing in your lab and that's where you're gonna be spending most of your time. But we also think that what we're doing in the all cohort like this is really important. And I want you to be sure to come to these things because me and Monica and we've spent a lot of time putting uh, energy into making these relevant for you. And for Vrinda and Maddie who are back, you know, we're not doing the exact same stuff we did last year because things change. And this is always, we hope this is always gonna be uh, relevant to you. So in the all cohort, you're gonna get the bigger picture about research, about different uh, types of engineering. We have guest speakers, we have activities and stuff like that. So um, let's, let me break this down for you a little bit more. Okay, in your specific labs now, you're gonna be working with your Shine mentors and your professors Mondays. Today's, uh, I've got you this morning because I wanted to give you this orientation, but uh, most Mondays, except for the, the third week, and I'll talk about that, you're going to be working with your mentors. Same with the Wednesdays. Now, I get you back from one to three um, for all cohort uh, and then Friday afternoons. Now, this does not mean that you're spending every minute of these open times. And I'm gonna break that down again about synchronous and asynchronous. So just hang on a minute. But these are the times that we have asked the professors and the mentors to make themselves available to you. That does not mean that those are the times. Like it might be that you have a class on Monday mornings and your shine mentor has agreed to meet with you Tuesday afternoons. Um, I. I'm going to talk about why I can't dictate the hours in the professor's uh, research group. So, um, but it does mean that hopefully these uh, Shine mentors have already communicated to you about different schedules. And if they haven't, uh, we can deal with that today, but not right this second. So it's not every minute of those times. And so you don't have to worry if you can't do it Wednesday from four to five. Um, we just ask the Shine mentors to try to have you working with them on similar days so that maybe you have a similar schedule so that maybe you can get together, uh, study together, chat together on stuff on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's the ideal. And as we know, life is messy. Okay, now we have you Wednesdays from one to three and Fridays from nine to noon. And that's where we do, we, we look at all sorts of things because even though, like I said, you might come in here knowing you love aerospace, but in the end, if you, you've never really understood anything about industrial and systems engineering, you don't know that you don't like that. So we're gonna try to expose you to a lot of things. Okay, so please note that. So every Friday, nine to noon, you're with me and our guest speakers and Monica. Wednesdays, one to three, same thing, okay? Um, now, when you're with your mentors, you may be doing things synchronously, like on the right side, where you're interacting at the same time live, like this is synchronous. Asynchronous, when your, your mentors may give you a data set to work on, they may give you a paper to read, they may give you um, uh, an, an assignment on Excel or uh, MATLAB. So those would be times that you're working on your own. Now, if you've got group, if you've got other Shine mates, of course, you're welcome to work together on Zoom or in person if you live near each other and your parents let you get together like that. Um, so even if it's you're not with your mentor, you're not necessarily alone. But I want to make sure that you understand those time differences, okay? Now let's break it down. When you're dealing with your lab, you're gonna be having synchronous meetings with your mentor, maybe your professor, maybe the whole group. Now, a lot of research groups will have uh, uh, journal meetings 
where they're reading things in the peer reviewed scholarly literature. Um, uh, maybe there's just a lab meeting that you get to attend. So that would be one way you learn the specifics about your lab. Uh, you might be shadowing your mentor as your mentor uh, is using equipment or um, conducting some parts of the experiment. Okay, um, asynchronously, we are going to be reading the, some of the peer-reviewed scholarly research that comes out of your lab or that helps your lab. Now, um, this can be tough. Uh, I would like to know if you could put in chat so that Monica could tell me how many of you are already accustomed to reading really long scientific articles that are peer reviewed. So put it in so I have a sense. Now, some of these things, I don't, ex some of these things maybe your mentor has already sent you and don't worry about them yet, okay? We are gonna teach you how to read this kind of literature. Um, I, and I don't know if that's my next slide, is it? Nope, it's not, um, but I'll come back to this because we teach you how to read the intro, the conclusion, and how to deal with this type of thing. But what we do in the all court is we help you understand why this is so important, okay? Are you getting a lot of answers, Monica? Yes, um, a lot of answers for somewhat and um, a handful of no experience to a little experience with okay. articles. So uh, no big deal. Most undergraduates don't look at this stuff, or at least they usually don't look at it until they're juniors or seniors. Is that right, Ashley? Do you look at this? Uh, Ashley, you're going to be a rising junior. Junior, yeah. So, senior? Junior. You're, okay. Did do you in your uh, your freshman and sophomore college classes? Did did you look at any um, scholarly literature? Uh, no, actually, we didn't. Even in RIT 150, when we had to do research papers, um, they would just show us how to use the library really quickly, but they unfortunately didn't. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is just the way Shine is trying to help you get a good sense of how scholarly knowledge is produced. Okay. So this will make sense if it doesn't make sense right now and it's totally new to you. Just chill out. Okay. No worries, but this is the type of work that you might be doing asynchronously um, that your mentor is, is giving you. Um, also, uh, also, if you could put in the chat, if any of you have already received anything through the mail from your Shine mentors, put it in the chat so that I know. But um, sometimes the Shine mentors will send you a kit so that you can make some devices at home or build a little circuit or a little robot or something like that. So that might be available to you to do asynchronously. You're not gonna build a robot on Zoom with your mentor, you're gonna do it on your own, but that, that would be part of your time. Monica, are we getting many answers? Yeah, um, a lot of them are saying no. And there was a question, um, is every mentor providing a kit for their students? Not necessarily. Nope. So don't worry if you didn't get one. And we only transferred them the money um, last week. So maybe they're still ordering their kits. So don't worry. Don't worry. There is nothing to worry about. Okay. Um, also, now your labs will um, undoubtedly be asking you to learn new software that uh, they use in, um, in uh, analyzing their data. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about MATLAB, but um, it might be that some of your, your time is spent learning this new software. Now, that's cool. We're going to come back to that. So those are ways you're going to learn specific skills that are pertinent to what, let's say, what Professor Graham is doing in chemical engineering and what Professor Sedaris is doing in electrical. Now, what do we do in all cohorts? And this is where we understand that uh, really what a university is, you think a university is something that's going to launch you on the rest of your life. Um, and it's that, but also a university is like a factory for producing new knowledge. Uh, and so we learn together about how new knowledge is created through research. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Ashley in a sec. Um, we are really lucky that Ashley, I assume you've all seen the video. 
All right. And so um, Ashley Perez is here. She's still one of our center mentors. Did I get the year? I hope I got the years right because I keep getting confused. Um, also, uh, we've got uh, other uh, Shine alumni. Uh, Cassandra is one of the center mentors that I'll talk about. And Sarah Burke is also a Shine alumna who uh, will be working in Professor Smith's lab. So, um, Ashley, I'm going to stop sharing and I throw it over to you and I want you to say anything that you want but I thought that also I wanted to put you in here just so that uh, you can help students understand um, how we learn by being both part of the cohort and the lab but please say whatever you want to say. Okay um, so I'll introduce myself first. I'm Ashley. I'm a rising junior at USC studying computer science and game design. I did Shine 2018. I worked on Kiwi, a therapy robot for children with autism spectrum disorder um, in the interaction lab with Professor Matarik. I'm currently still doing research in that lab because I had such a great experience during Shine. Uh, but beyond research, I'm also an avid hackathon participant and passionate about making games for social benefit. So if you have any questions about Matarik's lab or USC or if our interests align, you can reach out to me via Slack or email. Um, and then regarding the all cohort events. Uh, so beyond doing research in your lab, Shine um, is also made up of these events. So this is where you'll learn the non-technical skills that aren't typically taught in your labs. So for example, you're, you'll learn about scholarly, scholarly literature, research best practices, ethics. Um, you will develop your communication skills and get to know your peers and their research more. So these are really important skills that would benefit your research. And even if you decide not to go into research, um, they'll still, they can still be applied to your general education. Thank you, Ashley. So if anybody's got any questions for Ashley, you can put them in the chat or you could just unmute and talk. Um, Ashley, you, 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 you kind of modified your major uh, after Shine. Is that something that's, that a lot of college students do that they enter college and think that they're going to major in one thing and then change is that or was it just like was robotics so hard that you added gaming or what no uh well i changed my major three times before i even like started classes at usc so it's really easy which is really nice but um i decided to add games because computer science was just a little too bland for me i wanted to do a little something extra um it wasn't that it was hard it was just some an interest that i wanted to pursue um, because in college, you're going to see a bunch of really exciting things and you're going to want to try them all, which is completely valid. Um, but eventually you'll settle on like the things that you're most passionate about. Um, so you're still doing research. Is that because you are you going to be like a game producer? Or are you going to go into research? Why? Why would you still be doing research? Um, well, research has taught me a lot of skills. I'm still deciding between gaming industry and research, but if I do go into the gaming industry, I'll use my research skills um, because I want to make games for social benefit. So all those skills can be applied to why I want to make the games and things about the games that will apply to society. Um, so it's a win-win. And I know you you talk in the video about being first generation um, to college and your family. Um, what what do you, we have a lot of first generation people here? Um, how how did Shine help or how can Shine help or how can all the first generation people help each other? Um, well, Shine, I think really made my application to USC stand out because it showed that I took initiative to do more than what my community provided. So I came to Shine on a scholarship and I'm assuming a lot of you did as well, the first gen students. Um, so it just like opened a whole new world of opportunities for me. I think if I hadn't done Shine, then I don't know if I would have ended up at USC working for Katie, um, but uh, it also taught me a lot of skills that I wouldn't have learned otherwise, like scholarly literature, how to read those papers. My school would have never taught me that. Also, the connections that I made were incredible. Um, I would have never met these people if it weren't for Shine. They're really helpful. Okay, thanks for answering those questions. Looks like nobody asked any questions. All right. Thank you, Ashley. 
you see. And if you end up coming to USC, I hire you, right? And, and you know what? The nice thing is that my job is not to get you to come to USC. We like you if you, uh, if you go to Stanford or MIT or Cal State LA or whatever, we still like you. Um, but if you do come here, um, so Cassandra uh, in, was, was she, she was in your lab with you at the same year, wasn't she, Ashley? No, I, I was her center mentor. Or no, I was, yeah, I was just working for Shine when she was. Okay. Boy, the, mere, the years just do get mixed up in my head. Okay, no questions. All right, well, thank you, um, Ashley. Um, okay. I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. We love you, Ashley. Sorry to put you on this uh, spot. Let's see, I'm not, where am I? Okay, here we go. Oh my God, there we go. Okay, so what do we do? So this week, we are gonna do some easy readings. You're not reading the whole books or anything like that, so no worries. But um, I have, um, you're gonna find on the families page, we could also email it to you, um, a few pages from each of these books. So you're gonna start out with Why We Sleep, a couple, like a page and a half. Uh, and these readings talk about the researcher's experience through graduate school or maybe college and graduate school so that you can get a sense of what it's like. Um, this uh, Code Breaker is a great book, all you in biomed. It's still, it's still only in hardbound, but it's a really great book and lab girl. So none of these people are engineers, but what they've done is um, these are both first person, the Walker book and the Jaren book. And this is uh, not first person about Jennifer Doudna but um, <clears throat> they, they do talk about that experience of going through graduate school. I think it's a good introduction to, you're, you're just being dropped immediately into a research group where there could be uh, three people and there could be uh, 23 people, depending on how big the, um, the, the lab is, how many years the professor's been working. Uh, now, engineers, and scientists, but especially engineers, are not always good at talking about their experience just off the top of their heads. And so all of these are really, um, they're all storytellers and they all are doing a pretty good job of giving you a sense of the many changes that you might encounter as you um, uh, go through college and if in graduate studies or even your job like me, having done quite a few jobs. Um, let me give you a couple of uh, foretastes of what you're going to read. So Professor Walker, he talks about, I'm in love with discovering all that remains unknown about sleep. So he's a sleep researcher. I am in love with communicating the astonishing brilliance of it to the public. Okay, so like I said, not every scientist and a lot of engineers are in love with communication. You know, I don't know how many of you love to write. I know some of you do, but probably a lot of you are more comfortable in uh, math and physics than with words. So, uh, but Pr Professor Walker does a great job of talking about what he loves and why he loves it. Okay. He says, ultimately, he was figuring he was going to be a doctor. Medicine wasn't for me, as it seemed more concerned with answers whereas I was always more enthralled by questions. Well, you may agree with Walker about medicine being focused on the answers, um, but you will find the truth in research always being about the questions. As he says, you'll read for Wednesday, um, that one answer just leads to the next question. And that really is a good description of research at the university level, okay? Um, let's see. Okay, and uh, also for Wednesday, you're gonna read about Jennifer Doudna's journey um, as uh, a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, what the author says is by telling her story, I hope to give an up close look at how science works, what actually happens in a lab. Now, again, she's a, she's a, bio, a synthetic biologist, so she's more on the wet lab side than the computational side, but in the all cohort, we're gonna 
talk about the ways that somebody who does machine learning uh, might be helping with studying COVID, what you might think is a wet lab thing, okay? So this is what we do in all cohort. We try to get a sense of how this works. Um, and what uh, this author, Walter Isaacson, uh, likes about Doudna um, is that she feels the joy that comes from understanding and the thrill of discovery. So you've seen words like joy, love, uh, thrill. And those are all uh, aspects that your shine mentors, your professors, uh, your center mentors all have experienced, but they might not at, they might not talk about it if you don't ask them about it. Okay, so part of what we learn in all cohort is um, how to ask questions of the people who are mentoring you. Oh yeah, science is a team sport. So the kind of science that goes on in the kind of research that goes on in, in Shine is gonna be very different from what you're experiencing in high school. Because in high school, they have to time it so that it comes out right. Whereas uh, it's just not that way in real research. Okay, so um, again, this is the subgroups that I already talked about. I wanna to return to this uh, concept. Again, want you to place yourself on this continuum so that you know where you are. Um, electrical and material science is still a fair amount of modeling and stuff like that. Uh, in the middle, like I said, uh, uh, I think it's Christine, I think you're the one in civil. You're gonna be doing a lot of uh, virtual reality in aerospace. You guys do a lot of uh, MATLAB in ISC. You'll be doing machine learning, mechanical, a combination of computational and, and stuff and, um, and more experimental. Uh, and so let's see, oops. So I've already uh, shown you the breakdown of this so you could see it again, um, but now I want to explain why the sub cohorts and what you're doing in your research group is nothing like a uh, school and it's nothing like summer school. Okay. To kind of what uh, Ashley sort of described um, is that you have to, uh, you have to be learn how to speak up in a research group. You also have to learn to ask questions. You have to learn sometimes when to be quiet. You're not gonna understand everything. If you get to go to the lab meetings, if you get to uh, be part of the journal groups, you're not gonna understand everything and that's okay. A lot of it is just gonna come through osmosis. So I would say, don't worry about that. Um, being creative, being proactive um, is all good because the mentors, are not necessarily going to treat you like they are teachers. They're not gonna explain every little thing to you. Um, it's important to be collaborative. It's important to be independent as well. Now, resilience is something important because it's just not, everything's not gonna come uh, at the end of the hour like it does in your labs, in your high school labs. Um, things will take more time than you expect. Um, there's going to be failures. And that's the next reading that we're going to do with called Lab Girl. She's going to talk more about those failures. So ask your mentors about those too. And so you're going to go through a lot of feelings and um, just get used to them. I know that in high school, high school is all about being very controlled and being in your, your tribe and stuff like that. Um, this is an opportunity to break out of whatever rut you've gotten into in your high school and to uh, really explore. Um, okay, what I do want to explain though, is that research in a university like USC um, is very hierarchical. So I think you probably realize that there's different types of colleges. Um, uh, there's uh, community colleges, there's uh, Cal State colleges, there's University of California colleges, there's private colleges, uh, universities like USC, and they're ranked in different divisions, just like sports. So you all know that a division one school is the elite um, sports schools. 
and a division three school like they had where, where I used to teach at Occidental College. People are in sports for fun, but not because they're hoping to get into the NBA. Uh, it's very similar with research too. USC is a research one university, which means we're at the very top. Um, and so research is really the main function of our university. It is not teaching, believe it or not. The reason we teach undergraduates is so that we can have more people out there to be skilled workers in whatever career they go into, but also so that we have the bodies to keep creating research. Um, we have way more graduate students at USC than undergraduate students. And that is because we need all those PhD students and master's students to help with the research. So it's very important for you to understand that at the very top is the professor. So in research, we tend not to even call these people professors. We call them principal investigators or PIs. And they are simply the investigator who takes on all the responsibility. Think about just the principal investigator and all of these people are the other investigators. Now, you may not be very familiar with the whole graduate school trajectory if you don't have somebody who's been to graduate school, you don't know somebody like that. Um, so what we have is after, so you tend, you all know about going to undergraduate school and you know that that generally takes four years. It could take longer. Maybe you might go to a community college first and transfer. Um, but uh, as Ashley mentioned, she's still an undergraduate researcher in Professor Materic's lab. Then people go on when they, after they get their bachelor's degree, they uh, go on and maybe they get a master's degree like Monica talked about. Um, and in the sciences, they tend to go um, also into a PhD program. Um, and that in engineering, that tends to take five years. So that's five years in addition to the four years of your undergraduate work. Um, now, after you get a PhD, you might go directly into industry. Like you might go work at Google as a, um, a robotics engineer or an algorithmic engineer. You might go directly to Boeing to work as an aerospace engineer. You might go straight into um, working at uh, 3M as a material scientist, or maybe even working at the Natural History Museum as a researcher in material science. But if you're intending to be in industry, you tend to take another one or three years to be a postdoctoral researcher. And then if you're still interested in academia, after a couple of years of that, you might get a job as an assistant professor. So it's very hierarchical and I want you to understand that before you go in. Now, this is the type of thing that undergraduates aren't taught because most undergraduates don't have the experience that you're having, all right? You shine students are having a very special and a very elite experience to literally join a research group full of people who are gonna be older than you. Um, they want you there, so nothing to be intimidated. But I do want you to understand that there's a hierarchy that they will not explain to you because they're so immersed in it, they don't see it. Has anybody ever heard the saying that a fish never discovered water? Right? Think about it. A fish, the fish doesn't know it's in water because it's always in water, right? You, you catch a fish, you take it out of water, all of a sudden it knows what water is. So all of the people who have been through the system aren't totally aware of it. This is why I wanna explain it to you so that you have a map for going through this experience. Now, the reason it's so hierarchical is because the PI, the principal investigator is the one responsible for quite a bit of federal funding. Um, every, uh, um, I'm not sure about every year, but uh, like a year ago or before COVID, uh, the Viterbi School of Engineering had $180 million in research funds and most of it coming from the National Science Foundation. These are our tax dollars, all right? So your parents are paying part of the tax dollars that pay for the research that's being done. This is how government sets it up so that uh, we have, a, you know, each year we get new advances in cancer research or quantum uh, computing 
this is how we make sure as a nation to keep up with this scientific discovery. Um, also, your PI is, so your, your PI might be responsible for millions of dollars of taxpayers' money. Somebody has to be in charge, right? So um, also, some of these labs are very dangerous, right? Uh, there's toxic chemicals, there's laser beams, there might be cancer cells, there's all sorts of things. And somebody's gotta make sure that safety protocols are, re are, are kept. So this is why they're so hierarchical. And it's just good to understand that. And this is also why you may be spending a, a good amount of time with your professor and you may not because the professor is gonna be focused on uh, raising money, communicating results, making sure everything's safe. Um, and you're gonna learn about that. It's the postdocs and the PhD students who are doing the bulk of the research. And this is why we pair them with you, okay? So think of it as a tower of power. It's not a, a tower of power that you have to be very scared of. Um, Everybody wants you to be here. Okay, we want you to be here. And so if you're having troubles, um, we have a whole lot of ways for you to get help. Uh, okay, so think of that tower metaphor. And uh, if you never heard the phrase about an, what is an ivory tower, a lot of universities are considered ivory towers. I took this straight from Wikipedia. It's probably the last time you're gonna see me cite Wikipedia because we're gonna learn a lot more about citing uh, previous uh, research. But uh, as it explains, it's a metaphorical place where people are cut off from the, west of the rest of the world in their own pursuits. Um, universities have that reputation and we are fighting that reputation and shine is one of the ways we do it, but it kind of comes from the old, you know, English Cambridge and Oxford and stuff like that. Um, and you can see even on our campus, we've got these same kind of towers. Um, I want to make sure that you understand the term academia, um, which is can refer to um, uh, could be referred to professors. It could refer to higher education. It's a term that we in academics do use a lot. Uh, so it, it, it happens even here. Um, and so just want you to understand that. But uh, it does relate to how new knowledge is produced in research universities. Okay, so even though research is very hierarchical, what we're doing in Shine is mixing it up. So when you're in the labs, you have to understand this, but when you're with the all cohort, we're gonna uh, make sure that it's a lot more fluid, that you can ask questions, that you uh, can just um, take a little bit from maybe civil engineering and mix it with a little bit of uh, uh, material science and learn different things and uh, really get to know a lot of different things, okay? So, um, it's also really important that in Shine, you're going to learn from each other. I know that uh, I, all the years I taught college, I, I realized that students don't love to learn from each other. They prefer to learn from the professor or the teacher. They've, you, you've really been taught that that is the best way to learn. Um, but in Shine, you're going to learn from each other. Uh, you're going to learn from the differences that uh, you're going, the way Although half of you will be using MATLAB in Shine, uh, the way that you use it in aerospace is going to be very different than the way you use it in environmental engineering. And that will be interesting. Okay, you're going to meet different Shine mentors. You're going to learn a lot this way. Um, okay, so I want to talk about all the ways that we support you because you're going to get a lot of new stuff, especially in these, especially in weeks, uh, maybe, maybe you might consider this week a lot of new stuff, but week two, you're going to get a lot of new stuff. Um, so I'm going to talk about center mentors. You know me, you know Monica. Uh, we're going to have a lot of guest speakers and some activities. So even if you're not good at computer science and you've never taken CS principles, you we're all next week going to do an activity that involves um, some of the most esoteric parts of computer science that are constraints. So it, this is how you learn different things. 
Um, and really, I can't emphasize enough, you're gonna learn by doing and by relaxing. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about center mentors. Let's, let's just stand up for a sec. Guys, I'm wearing my jeans. Thank goodness I wasn't wearing shorts today. How are you doing? Okay, center mentors. So these are uh, either undergraduate students or master's students who are helping out in each sub cohort. Um, you've probably heard from them already and they hope to meet with you both one-on-one -on -one and as a sub cohort. Um, since there's 58 of you, Monica and I do our best to kind of keep track of you, but the center mentors are gonna uh, help us keep track of you. And they are the, um, if you've got any questions or problems or comments or anything like that, um, you're gonna hopefully be meeting with them every week. Um, so Emily right here, uh, she is the center mentor for electrical and materials science. She's a master's student in education. She's going to be a math teacher. Uh, she knows a lot about physics and engineering. She's got a lot of friends in engineering. So uh, you're going to be really lucky to have Emily as your center mentor. Aislinn over here, she's a bio major. She's not in engineering, but we won't hold it against her. She still is going to understand a lot of what all of you in biomedical engineering, chemical engineering, and environmental engineering are going through. We also have Sarah, who is, she's still a high school student. She was in Professor Smith's Shine group before COVID back in 2019. She's gonna be back in Professor Smith's lab um, and she's gonna hang out with us. Monse here, she's a civil engineering major. Uh, she's really interested in construction. She's never done the virtual reality that Professor Bers uh, uh, Baseric Gerber does, um, but she knows a lot about uh, all the different fields of Viterbi engineering. Um, so she's going to be helping all of you who are in the group that does uh, air civil, aerospace, industrial, and mechanical. Um, Cassandra, a, uh, uh, we've talked about her, a Shine alumna um, who was in Professor Materic's computer robotics lab. Um, and just so you know, robotics is computer science, but I've, uh, you know, what you will be doing in, if you're in Professor Zhang's or Ren's lab is gonna be different than if you were in, working in one of the robotics labs. Um, and uh, Ashley um, are gonna help you guys uh, out who are in CS and robotics. Uh, and Jackie here is gonna be everywhere. Okay, she's gonna, uh, she's gonna especially uh, get together with people who are in the Bay Area, um, but she's, she's a master's student in, uh, social, in social work. Uh, she does her field work in high schools. Um, now, also uh, Arjun is uh, also a Shine alum way back. I can't even remember. He's like, he'll, he's a rising senior. In, at USC right now. So he was probably 2017. Uh, Kendall is gonna help you learn MATLAB. He's not a, he's not a alum, but he's worked, he's a, he's a mechanical engineering major and he's worked with us since he was a freshman. All right, so uh, these are the people that have been emailing you that hopefully you're gonna get together on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Again, if your schedule's not working out, the time to panic is not this week, okay? You can panic next week about it, but we're gonna work out all the kinks this week. Okay, our center mentors um, also are planning all of the happy hours and the ways that we get together. Um, and so this week we're gonna have a happy hour. You're not required to come to happy hours. They're gonna be fun. So if you don't like fun, please do not come. But even if you don't like fun, I encourage you to come because it's how you're gonna to get to know one another. So this week, because we got so much going on this first week, we're gonna hold it from five to six on um, Thursday, this Thursday. Otherwise, um, it's, we're gonna alternate Tuesdays and Thursdays from four to five. If you don't come, it's okay. Um, we do take roll, you guys, we do. 
Um, but we do that mostly so that we can track you because if you are, tends to be, if you're having trouble, people start not showing up and we don't want you to not show up. So we will check in on you, but you don't get a grade. There is nothing to be afraid of. You don't get a grade. At the end of Shine, you do get a letter that says, what you learned, your professor and your shine mentor are gonna write a letter and they're gonna detail what you learned. And then I add to it all the stuff that we do in all cohort. And you can use that letter when you apply to colleges uh, or apply for internships or jobs. But um, we really, it's, we really wanna be as different from school as we can possibly be. So uh, you don't have to do anything, which is why the Shine alumni will tell you, get the most that you can out of Shine because you get out of it what you put into it. Okay. Whew. Let's talk about what your week's gonna look like. Okay. So you're here with us right now. Um, we always give you a break for lunch. If you guys wanna get together on, you know, during lunch, it's up to you. Yes, that's why you have to get to know one another. Um, this afternoon is when we've told your shine mentors to get together with you. Um, now, this does not, well, I forget if I have it on this slide. This doesn't mean that you're gonna be with your shine mentors at one through five every minute. Um, hopefully you've heard from your shine mentors, maybe you've heard from your professors already, um, and that you have established a time to meet this afternoon. We just let that very hierarchical lab research group know when you're available. Um, and again, if you haven't heard from your mentor or you're having some problems connecting, um, we will hang out afterwards and you can solve those problems then. Hey, Monica, any questions or anything going on in chat that I should know about? No, no questions. Okay, good. All right. So, and then you can see the way we've parsed out the week. Um, that, as I said, we've, we've told the center mentors um, that these are the, I, I mean your shine mentors, we've told your shine mentors, these are the times that we're not taking you. Now, um, this week, we have you this morning, but otherwise you'll be with your, you'll be available to your shine mentors um, on Mondays. So these blocks show you the times that we've, structured for you to be available to meet with your shine mentors you don't it's not that you must be meeting with them all of those times got it you'll be doing synchronous and asynchronous work during those times each mentor may select a different way to reach out to you they may meet you on uh beside zoom but they may say oh slack me anytime you have questions or they might say you can slack me Monday and Wednesday afternoons. They might hold office hours the way I hold office hours. Um, so there's gonna be a variety of ways that you communicate with your labs. All right, we clear on that, any questions? Um, Katie, just to clarify for the um, readings you mentioned, students do not have to purchase any of the books, correct? No, no, no purchasing, okay? The readings are all gonna be available to you. All right, and we'll watch some videos too. Okay, great, now let's move on. So as you can see, we're gonna have you Wednesday afternoons and Friday mornings, all right? And, and we take role and I want you to come because this is how you're gonna learn how knowledge is produced. And otherwise it's gonna, you, it's just gonna be very focused. It's really important to us. And, it's, and it becomes important to you. We know by doing the surveys before and after that this is important. So, um, and when we meet with all cohort, we're always here. This is my Zoom uh, channel and we will always be here. So we don't always uh, write it down. Now this Friday, the 18th, uh, we're gonna check in together on this Zoom channel. Um, and you're gonna hear from Kendall, who is gonna be the one teaching MATLAB next week. Um, we're gonna um, talk about the homework that you're gonna do. Uh, you have some readings for uh, Wednesday afternoon and Friday morning. But then from 10 to noon, you're going to go to a different Zoom room and everybody's going to take the lab safety training. Now, you might think, 
I'm never going to take another lab course again. I love computer science. I hate chemistry. I'm never going to do it. I don't need this certificate. And that's uh, just not true. We want everybody to get the certificate. If you are uh, not at this training for the full two hours, you will not get the certificate. If you, um, so don't leave. And if you, if you have to leave, let us know in advance because you need the certificate. So I'm gonna talk about if we can ever get on campus. If we can ever get on campus and we can do lab tours, uh, you, in order to go into uh, the labs, especially the toxic labs, you're gonna to have to have this lab safety certificate. Um, and there's gonna be a quiz at the end and you have to take the quiz before you get the certificate. You're gonna get a lot of certificates in Shine. This is just the first. So please do plan on being there the whole time, okay? Um, now, you've already met your center mentors, at least you've seen their pictures and you know where to find them. Like if you didn't catch your center mentor's name or something, remember you can always go back to this URL. Um, Hopefully you can see them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's not gonna work out that way for everybody. So if it doesn't, we're, we're gonna work it out. It's just gonna take some time. All right. Now, um, I always have, oh my goodness. I, don't, I think my office hours are from one to three this week and then next week they're gonna be from one to two. So I think I have extra long office hours. Um, and these are where my office hours are too. So uh, I love to hear from you guys and um, Maddie and Brenda can say people come to office hours. And so if you have any problems, you know when you can see me. This week, we are gonna have the happy hour at five to six, but in future weeks, it's gonna be from four to five. Um, you don't have to worry about the mentors meeting, just you know that, that I'm, I'm gonna be meeting with them. Now, there are other things here. Oh. Right, we only have seven weeks together. Like in high school, you've got basically, you, you pretty much have like 20 weeks, 18 weeks per semester. You have a lot of time to learn things by osmosis. Seven weeks is gonna go really fast. So this is why we are accelerating your learning um, by having all these different ways of learning the shortcuts about bonding, about how scholarly knowledge is produced and stuff like that. Okay, um, now um, there's a lot of things that you don't have to do. You don't have to come to my office hours, but I like it if you do. You don't have to go to the happy hours, but you will look, You will be able to bond with each other faster. Um, and then I don't care at all if you come to Angela Davis, but this is something that is available to you because you're part of USC. So USC does a lot of speakers, it does uh, films, it does all sorts of things. If you've ever been to the book, the LA Times Book Festival on our campus. Um, so I'm going to go to this and it's available to you for free. So if you've been, if you know who Angela Davis is and you're interested in hearing her speak, that's available to you because you're part of the Trojan family right now. Okay, so uh, you can learn by having fun. So try to have fun. It's a whole new way of learning. So what's your week gonna look like? So again, you don't have a specific schedule that every Shine student has. We try to make similar schedules. Um, I know I'm gonna see you Wednesdays from one to three and I know I'm gonna see you Fridays from nine to noon, um, but you're gonna spend about half of about 10 hours a week um, working with your, your Shine mentors um, synchronous and asynchronously. Uh, maybe a quarter of your time might be learning new software. Uh, I'm going to talk about the opportunity for some really great uh, learning through Workforce Ready. Um, and we'll have challenges. So maybe when we do some computer science challenges, not everybody's going to want to do them, but you might want to. Uh, there might be some prizes and stuff like that. So we're going to mix it up. And then for about 25% of your time, we're going to have you. Um, either in the all cohort meetings or with your center mentors. So that kind of gives you a sense of how we, we, we figure you're gonna spend 20 hours a week. We don't count. Uh, you could, you're welcome to spend more, 
Uh, your, your shine mentors need to do their own research too. So you, you can't bug them too much, but um, they're, they're, in, they're in here to help you. Okay, let's go into week two now. All right, we're only to week two. Um, the calendar is on the uh, families page. So I, I think I recreate the calendar next, but um, MATLAB, now Monday afternoon, Kendall, who is, as I said before, he's a mechanical engineering um, major. Uh, he is a rising senior and he's super good with MATLAB and he taught MATLAB. Uh, so MATLAB is, comes from MathWorks. It's a uh, data visualization and simulation software that's gonna be used in half of the Shine Labs. Um, it actually, there's a online tutorials. And so you will take those online tutorials that were created by MathWorks, but Kendall will introduce it to you. He's got drop-in office hours uh, that on Tuesday, the next day. And we also have other ways of helping you if you're having trouble with MATLAB, okay? So um, other software that you might be learning week two uh, is probably gonna be on LinkedIn Learning. So every, there's so many things on LinkedIn Learning. Uh, you might need advanced Excel skills. Maybe you have basic Excel skills. Uh, maybe you need some uh, refresher in Python. Your Shine Mentor is gonna uh, help you know what he or she wants you to have. Now, when you take um, MATLAB training, when you take LinkedIn Learning um, tutorials, you get certificates for all of these. And so we like the certificates. We encourage you to create a LinkedIn profile and put your certificates on your LinkedIn profile. We encourage you to put these on your resumes and your college applications. And we think that they're really a good way to show that you've learned above and beyond. Um, MathWorks besides MATLAB has all sorts of other things, Simulink, other things that some of your mentors are gonna be asking you to learn. So um, this is what we mean by resilience and, uh, and independence, that some of the things you're gonna learn are gonna be on your own through tutorials. You can do them together if you want. Um, and, but if you're having trouble with any of them, we're here to help you, okay? Um, also, uh, we'll talk a little bit about reading the scholarly literature this week, but we're really gonna dive into it next week. Um, and this is part, a big part of helping you understand not only the hierarchies in your lab, but the hierarchies about how new knowledge is produced uh, nationally and internationally, okay? So um, I've used this example before. Um, this is something that was actually written by a Shine professor, Professor Bogdan. Um, now, these, this particular article is 18 pages long and it's really hard to understand. You can go here and check it out yourself, but we teach you what all of these things mean and we teach you how to read it. We teach you to focus on the title, the abstract, the intro, and the conclusion, all right? The pictures are great to look at, but we don't expect you to understand everything in between. However, by being able to discern what's going on in the intro and the conclusion, you're gonna get that bigger picture of how knowledge is produced in society and why it's important. What exactly are the questions that are unanswered that they are building upon? Because scientific research is all about building on the shoulders of people who come before you. Now, there's also a lot of competition and the reading that you're gonna do for a Wednesday from The Code Breaker, which talks about um, the ways that all uh, so many researchers got together to help with the COVID vaccines and COVID diagnostics and COVID um, you know, testing. Um, you're gonna read about that. Uh, it's also competitive. And so a lot of what you're gonna see in your research group is gonna be private. That's why 
although we want you to share on Instagram and uh, Twitter and social media, you got to check out with your mentor that you're not sharing something that another research group that is racing to figure out the same thing, um, that you're not giving away any uh, important private information. So we teach you what's called IMRET, and I is introduction. M stands for methods, and that's what you skip. That's the stuff that your SHINE mentors can explain to you, and that's what you're learning. It's the specifics in your lab. So all cohort is all about the intro and the conclusion. The methods is about specifics in your lab. Um, uh, you will learn that in scholarly literature, we separate results from discussion. And that is to, to keep that very important value in scientific research that the results are what, what is generated and the discussion is the interpretation. So that they, there's a really important value in keeping results separate from the interpretation because the interpretation could be wrong. Um, but in the interpretation is what's important to all of us in society. That's why we focus on it. Okay. Oops. All right. That's week two. Week three. Oh, week two and three. We're going to start delving into that scholarly literature. So don't panic about it. You're not going to understand every word. That's okay. Week three, you are going to go uh, and meet with librarians and, uh, on Monday from 10 to noon, it's just gonna be those students in the computer science and robotics labs and the sub cohort of civil, aerospace, industrial, and me mechanical. That means that all of the others of you are gonna be with your center, with your uh, shine mentors that morning. But then those of you who are with your Shine Mentors Monday morning will be meeting with the librarians Wednesday morning. And all of you who are in the library uh, Monday morning will be with your Shine Mentors that afternoon, okay? Uh, this is just a, I, I just look for fun graphs that uh, help you understand the whole way that uh, research is produced in the lab, that you get the results, how do you interpret them? How do you start sharing them in the scientific community? You do that through posters. That's, that's a fairly easy way scientists and engineers share their research results. Then maybe you go to a conference. That's a little harder. Then maybe you publish. And uh, this is just a quick overview of how um, publications are submitted. They're reviewed by other scientists and then published. So you'll learn about all this. This is just a, a quick intro. You get Monday off. Um, July 5th, we don't, we don't expect anybody to work then. Uh, you don't work evenings, you don't work weekends. You know, if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, study a little bit more calculus or Python in the evenings or weekends, you're entitled to do that. But um, uh, you're not, your, sen your shine mentors aren't gonna ask you to do anything over the weekends. Okay, I'm gonna take a breath. Uh, how many of you know that June 15th tomorrow is the day that uh, the LA County is opening back up? All right, Amy. Yep, you know. Okay, I'm sure other people know. You can raise your hands. I love that you did that. All right, Sophia. Okay, so uh, how does this affect Shine? The answer is, I don't know. Okay, the vaccinations and the COVID situation is getting better all the time in California. We're all in California. Um, so there are possibilities that campus will open up. I don't know. Um, I am hoping that we can have the final poster session on July 30th on campus. Now, this might mess up all of you who don't live in uh, Los Angeles, those of you in the Bay Area. And um, all I can say is that none of us has been in control of schedules with the coronavirus. Um, and if we end up being able to come to campus for July 30th and you're from the Bay Area and your family can't make it down here, I, I truly apologize. 
and we will figure something out. Maybe we'll have a poster session in the Bay Area um, for all of you. Um, but we, I, I just don't know how things are gonna change. Right now, to, uh, to come on campus, you need to go through all sorts of uh, electronic checks. It's not easy. And for all of you who are under 18 and who, who even if you, we're a shine student right now, it would be very hard for you to, I mean, uh, even if you are a USC student, it'd be hard to come to campus. I'm not on campus. Monica's not on campus. I, we've only been to campus once since last, since March, 2020. However, um, things are getting better. So I will always keep you informed. Now, um, what I do need to say though, is that the, the two biomedical engineering professors uh, Professor Zevaleta and Professor Chung, and the environmental and the, uh, envir environmental engineering professor, Professor Smith, um, have received special permission to have their Shine students in the lab with them. Now, I know that everybody would prefer to be on campus and would prefer to be in the labs, um, but those are the only ones who have permission to come to campus, not this week, but starting next week if all the paperwork goes right. Um, chemical engineering, even though you're kind of on the wet lab side, um, those professors have said, no, we are prepared to teach this remotely as we did last year. Um, and that's what we're going to do. So this is only affecting a few people. I realize that this uh, may not seem fair, and I'm happy to listen to your complaints. Um, and I'm going to do everything I can to get people back to campus um, who want to be on campus. So uh, yeah, this is just a quick, uh, this is from today's or maybe yesterday's LA Times um, that USC doesn't even know what this is going to bring to our campus. So we will, we will find out now, but I want to say that uh, if your parents uh, let you, you guys who live near each other can get together. Um, USC Village, which is just across the street from USC campus is public. Uh, you can all go there. It's public. Um, so if you want to hang out together, that might be one place if you live close enough. Uh, all four of you who go to Portola High School, you might be sick of each other. You don't want to get together, but there might be other people um, in the Irvine area that you could get together with at a Starbucks or a park or something like that. So I'm just saying um, that you might be able to get together. Also, uh, you can see on the calendar that we offer a, a sort of Zoom study hall so that if anybody just wants to quietly Zoom together, <clears throat> work, um, we have those Tuesday afternoons. I think it's from two to four. So there's a lot of ways that you don't have to be isolated. Um, so let's see. All right. So it's time for another break. Um, this is what I would like to do. Let me give you. Um, uh, just a few minutes to stand up and shake it out. But um, what I'd like to ask you to do is to shake it out. And I'd like you to uh, go into breakout rooms. Now, um, I'm not very good at breakout rooms. So I'm hoping that this, you know what, Monica? I think that I'm really bad at breakout rooms. Okay, so first of all, um, I would like you to go right now to tinyurl.com backslash USC dash download. And I want you to download this form. I don't want you to fill it out on the Google Drive that it's on. I want you to download it for yourself. Now, if you came to the meet and greet, this is the same thing that we did during the meet and greet. And it's just trying to get you interactive here so that you start learning each other's names. Um, and we do definitely focus on first names. Now, there's a couple of Ashleys, there's a couple of Tanbys, there might be a couple more of the others of you. So you might want to note uh, last initials, but it's just a way to get to know each other. Um, and uh, is, this is an opportunity to uh, show some leadership. So get this, download it so that you've got your own. It's just going to be yours to uh, remember people's names. If you don't get everybody's names, don't panic because the answers to this are on the family's page, but I'm trying to get you to talk to one another. 
All right. Somebody, you guys can't be shy when you go into the breakout rooms. Um, you just, you're not going to have that much time in the breakout rooms and you got a couple of things to do. So you want to say hi to each other. You want to go around and everybody say hi, say something about yourself. Where do you live? Figure out where the other people in your, um, your sub cohort live. Uh, cause you might want to find a Starbucks to hang out together. Um, and I want somebody to take a group photo and email it to your center mentor. So that means you got to figure out who is your center mentor. You got to find their email address. Um, somebody's got to take charge, take that screenshot and email it. And also CC us. And this is the email. Oh, I didn't finish it. Look at that. Uh, K12 STEM1 at USC.edu. Um, so send it to both of us. Now, again, we don't take pictures of you and put them on Instagram because um, we, we want to respect your privacy. Now, we, we do have an image release form that all of you have signed, and eventually we might be putting pictures of you, but we're going to talk about that more, but we're not going to do it today. But uh, still, I want I to get a picture of every sub cohort. Um, Monica, did you put that URL in the chat for me? Yes, and I also created the breakout rooms uh, where students would need to uh, okay. go to their designated uh, okay. break rooms. Great, thank you. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Um, it's 11.10 right now. I'm gonna give you two minutes to uh, download this, take a quick stretch or whatever. Oh, it's already 11.11. Um, and at 11.13, get to your breakout room. And I'm um, in, um, I'm dividing up all of the, uh, you'll see the biomed and environmental are the people who are going to get on campus. Chemical engineering, you're part of that sub cohort, but you're not going to get on campus. So go to room two and, and get mad at me. Um, uh, so, and then we're going to do this for uh, 20 minutes. So at, you're going to get back together at 1113. And then we're going to come back as a cohort at 11.33. Welcome back, everybody. So thank you for keeping your cameras on, you guys. It's so nice to see your faces. Let's try to get to know you. All right. Is everybody back? Did you get to know each other a little bit? Yeah. OK, good. Hey, Roberto, um, say hi for your your group and let's see we are going to um i'm going to have monica share her screen did you guys get to us uh, did everybody introduce themselves in your group roberto yeah yeah i got the names on my um sheet okay good that's for your benefit and tell us the name of your group okay so i i had the biomedical group and the um engineer i mean uh, engineer, environmental group and yeah. they were gabriella a abby c Emily P, Jimin Y, am I saying that right? I hope I am. Miriam G, Chara N, and myself, Roberto C. Hi guys. <laughs> That's fine. You don't even need to read their names. I'm just, I'm just getting you guys used to every so, somebody from every group. I'm gonna just have something, say something. So Monica, are you uh, sharing your slides? Um, yes, I'm still um, putting in some of the images. Oh, okay. So what we did is we're putting in your the pictures that you took. Okay. So we won't we won't put those on Instagram or anything, but just uh, you know say hi. Um, hey, Luke, we got we wanted to call on you. What was your group? Did you guys all get a chance to meet each other? Uh, yes. Uh, I had a group in robotics with Alan, Alondra. It's okay. You don't have to say everybody's name. I'm just just making it just easy for people to start talking. You don't have to say everybody's name, but okay, that's great. Good work, um, Gabby. How about you? Did your group meet each other? What group were you? And you don't have to name names. I was actually in Roberto's group, so <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, uh, Vedika, Vedika, how uh, about electrical? 
Yeah, so we had a few people or like a bunch of people in our group. So we all got to know each other and it was really fun. Good. You guys talked because you had a big group. So I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, we played a bunch of icebreakers and got to know about what type of shoe everyone would be. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Who? Let's see. How about uh, Rachel? Can you tell us about your group? Um, yeah, I, I had um, the civil and aerospace mechanical group. And we just talked about what we're doing this summer and why we chose, what we, um, why we chose the professors that we're working with. Okay, good, great. And let's see, what group have I not called on? I think I chemical. CS. Okay, Justine. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was in the chemical group. We're pretty small, so we all were able to talk a lot about like APs and stuff. And don't worry, we didn't complain too much about not being in person. I'm glad, but you know, it's, I'm glad. Good. Um, did I get all the groups? I can't keep track right I now. Forgot, I, didn't, I didn't think you got CS. <laughs> okay. Well, then who, who are you? Uh, you're not on my screen. I'm Chris. I'm okay, Chris, Chris, tell us. Am, did you guys all talk to one another or yeah, did you nerd out? A lot of unique faces. I think we're just missing one person, but yeah, got a lot, uh, talked about APs, you know, um, uh, overcomplicating problems like we do in CS. <laughs> and yeah, just overall, just talking, you know, getting to know each other. Okay, good. All right, well, we'll get the pictures up later. Um, I'm not, Monica, stop working so hard. Stop working so hard. I have these ideas that, uh, that, and then that I make Monica help me with the ideas. And sometimes they're too hard to do. So no worries. All right, you guys, uh, uh, you probably need a break. I'm going to just, let's just push through and we can end a few minutes early, but you could stand up, all right? Ah, uh, nobody's doing it. Um, okay. All right, that's biomed and environmental. Look like you're having fun. Want to go to the next one? Uh, which one's this? All right, well, there you can see each other. We're going to keep going. All right. Yep, that's twice for biomed. Okay, good. Oh, twice for this group too. All right, what group is this? Oh, well, now you know each other. Let's go to the next one. Okay, oh, that's civil, aerospace, industrial, and mechanical. Thank you, Maddie, I can see you. All right, let's go. Okay. All right, so what I was saying is, um, let's just power through, we're almost done. Uh, this is something that I'm gonna turn over to Monica, and this is something that if you are interested, it's another one of our optional opportunities. Uh, I think it's awesome. Um, uh, Ashley uh, also likes it, so if you need to know more, Ashley can tell you about it, but I'm gonna turn it over to Monica uh, to talk about. Hello, everyone, once again. Um, so this is the Workforce Ready Program. It is a partnership that the USC SHINE program has partnered up with United LA to provide you with um, workforce ready skills. Um, so in order to be eligible, you need to be through 14 through the age of 24. Um, this is all virtual, so you can definitely do this while doing the SHINE program as well. So a little bit about the Workforce Program. Um, it helps you develop soft skills. Um, through their virtual program. It is a six weeks short program full of self-paced online courses. So it is 19 modules and the total of hours that you will spend working on it is up to 12 hours. So if you divide it by six weeks, it's like two hours per week. Um, you can develop essential skills that will help you um, with time management, creative um, problem solving, resume building, communication, and professional relationship building. Um, so there are four um, pillars that come with um, this program. 
So one, it makes the application ready. So once you want to apply to a job, it helps you um, figure out how to tackle the application portion of it. The second one is how to tackle the interview. So it gets you interview ready. The third one is job ready. It gives you the entry level skills that you would need to be successful in that job. The fourth one is um, career ready. It helps you with different career paths and helps you advance in the curriculum, advance in those skills. So some of the courses that are included in this program include um, professional email communication, introduction to Microsoft, Outlook and Word, resume and cover letter guides, how to complete a job application, what to expect during an interview, practice um, follow-ups. So sometimes after an interview or after you meet someone, you wanna follow up, uh, you wanna demonstrate ownership by following through, you wanna prioritize your work. And that's just a few of the courses. Um, there's more listed. Um, so these are some of the competencies. Um, I'll give you a moment to read. I'll read a couple. So there's networking, job knowledge, um, punctuality, um, customer service skills. So these are all great skills that you will learn within this program. Um, so the commitment of this program is one, you have to complete um, the survey. That's letting them know that you will um, you are signing up for the program and you do have to complete 12 hours um, for the program over the frame of six weeks. And then um, the United LA team will, will communicate with you weekly. And then in order to pass um, the customer service quiz and the workforce ready post assessment, and lastly, complete the program post survey. Um, and let us know if you have any questions so far. So these are the commitments when you do sign up for the program. So you um, should apply by today. Um, today is the deadline by today, 5 p.m. And here is the link. And that is the first, um, the program pre-survey, which is this link here. And I just put that into the chat. I think I got it correctly. Okay, thank you, Monica. Hey, Ashley, I know that you um, feel pretty good about workforce ready. Can you can you say how the students who did it last year, what, why they liked it? Uh, yeah, I just put something in the chat. Um, but even if you think you've already developed these skills, um, I still really recommend it because it never hurts to have more people review your resume or your LinkedIn. Um, and if you haven't, it's a really good opportunity to learn all these soft skills. Um, again, you don't have to use them in industry only. They can be applied to your whole life, such as in time management. Um, it's really useful. Um, and I think it's a small time commitment for a really large personal investment. And it's free to you, Shine students. So take advantage. Get another certificate on your LinkedIn. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, this, so this is just one of the things that we make available to you through Shine. This actually costs, if you were gonna pay for this, it would cost $5,000. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty worth doing if you have the time. And if you don't have the time, don't sweat it, it's okay. We're gonna offer you a lot of things. You're not gonna be able to do everything, but this is one of the things. However, if you do wanna do it, you do gotta use that bit.ly and, um, and sign up for it today. So uh, just two hours a week. Uh, Unite LA is the education part that is very connected to the Chamber of Commerce. So um, it's a, we did have quite a few students last year participate in it. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, but we know you, you can't do everything. We know that you're doing other things. Um, hopefully you, I'm amazed how many of you uh, we're talking about AP exams. I'm, I'm hope it's just uh, post traumatic stress disorder because hopefully nobody is taking any more exams. Okay, uh, we're we're almost done. Let me get this. Okay, so um, you do get a certificate. 
uh, when you complete it and you can put that on your LinkedIn along with the other certificates that you will earn as part of Shine. So this is all part of making you a really attractive candidate when you apply to college um, or for jobs. So uh, we encourage you to take advantage of what you can and nobody's gonna give you a hard time for what you can't do. And remember, what do you do? Okay, here's a, your first pop quiz. What do you do if you're having problems? You don't get MATLAB, you can't remember Python, you don't hear from your Shine mentor, your center mentor, you, you forgot their email address. What do you do in any of those situations? Email K-12? K-12-STEM1 at usc.edu. Exactly. Very good. You've got an A. Okay. We're almost done here. You guys hang in there. Um, okay. Yeah. So these are all uh, great things for when you apply uh, to college. They will make a difference. The biggest thing that's going to make a difference is your ability to communicate and to have confidence. What you do in the labs is gonna be important and it's gonna impress people, but it's a, your ability to tell the story of your research that is what we focus on in the all cohort. And if you get an interview or if you get your, um, uh, if you get an, a chance to have an interview to get into college or for your, your common app, uh, later in these seven weeks, we're gonna, you're going to meet with a writing professor in uh, the Viterbi School of Engineering. You're going to meet with an admissions officer who, from the Viterbi School of Engineering, and you're going to get um, some tips on how to, I'm sure some of you already know how to apply to college well, but we're going to tell you how to leverage your shine experience to really stand out in your applications. Okay. Um, we end on July 30th with the uh, shine session, uh, sorry, the poster session. Um, I assume that some of you have already looked at some of uh, the posters that are available. Uh, these are not to be like the template for what you do. Like if you're going to end up in Professor Nuzo's lab, like Rachel, who did this, did, I don't want to see the exact same kind of poster. If you have lab mates, in your uh, group, like all four of you in Professor Materek's lab, you're gonna each do your own uh, poster. Um, uh, so this is, this is what we're aiming for, is this is sort of the big culmination on July 30th that we all look forward to. Um, I don't expect you to read this, but I expect you to have your own story to tell. OK, you will tell it in uh, your ability to talk. You'll get plenty of practice here. You'll tell it in your poster and you'll get plenty of help making your poster. Um, and uh, you will have data and ways of putting this together. OK, I don't want to dwell on that now, um, but there's a variety. This is Professor Smith's lab, no, McCurry's lab. Uh, she got to a kit to test the chlorine levels of her tap water. But this is how I'm going to end. Um, so listen, I have office hours every Thursday that are open for you. Now, this particular Thursday, this week, they're from one to three so that you, uh, you have more time. You can drop in. I think um, eventually I'm going to have like the first half an hour, you can make a five minute appointment with me on Calendly. And then the second half an hour will be, we just all hang out together. Um, the center mentors are going to have their own office hours and we will post them uh, by the end of day tomorrow on the place where you can find everything. You can find your homework for Wednesday and Friday there. You can find the calendar there um, and you can find everything there. I think Monica is going to add some office hours also. So really this, you've made it. You've made it through the first all cohort day. You survived. Thank you for letting me talk at you quite a bit. I won't talk this much. We will be a little bit more interactive. Um, if you, yep, thank you, Monica, for putting that in. Um, you, you, let's see, yes, you, uh, we encourage you to create a LinkedIn this summer for yourself. And uh, yeah, we can make it a, a group one. 
you should create it on your own, but we'll talk about it more. So you guys don't have to do everything today. We know that you're high achieving, ambitious students. That's why we picked you. And now we, we picked you because you're high achieving and now we want you to calm down, okay? Relax, you're gonna learn plenty this summer. Take a breath. It's your time to um, eat some lunch, get a break, and hopefully you all have a plan for getting together with your, your Shine Mentor this afternoon. Monica and I are gonna hang out here. So if you've got any problems, we're gonna help you problem solve. If you got problems after we're not on the Zoom anymore, then go to K-12 STEM 1. I'll put it in again. At usc.edu. And uh, by this afternoon, if, there, if, if all of these slides aren't already up on the family's page, we'll make sure that they get there. We will also make the um, recordings available to you. We'll probably put them on a private YouTube channel so that only you guys can access them, not everybody, to again, to protect your privacy. Um, and I will see you back here on Wednesday from one to three, okay? Good work, you guys. You did a good job today. Welcome to Shine. Thank you.